Finding the courage to voice the taboo. Paulo Freire, a Brazilian educator and philosopher, was a leader in critical thinking instruction. And in his book, the, Ped uh, the Pedagogy of the Oppressed, he writes, human existence cannot be silent, nor can it be nurtured by false words, but only by true words with which men and women transform the world. I believe that is true, and I want to transform the world. I graduated from Columbia University, Graduate School of Journalism, and spent six years as a reporter in New York, hoping that I could write that story that would bring forth more justice in the world and perhaps change the world. I loved being a journalist, chasing stories, investigating the truth and writing about it. But sometimes the publications that I worked for had to tell me to temper my activism, which was, I admittedly, sometimes very hard to do. So when 9-11 hit, I was actually on staff at the Journal News in Westchester County, New York. And I, as all the reporters were like thrown on the story and told to attend the funerals and talk to the survivors and share that story. Well, at the time, much like today, I was seven months pregnant. <laughs> but at that time, it was with my first child. And it was an extremely difficult story to cover. I wanted to touch humanity with my own humanity. I wanted to scream and cry and break down and, and be a human being as opposed to stoically standing on the sidelines reporting what I saw. So at that moment, I decided I have to figure out another way to transform the world. I will become a teacher. Teaching, I reasoned, would allow me to make a more direct, immediate impact on people's lives. And then I could be more of an activist, changing the world one student at a time. Well, didn't quite work out that way. I quickly discovered that my true words in education were even more muted than it had ever been. I was often I often thought that the education world wasn't prepared for a teacher like me, a teacher who wasn't afraid to ask those tough questions, a teacher who didn't quite understand why my probing follow-up questions were perceived negatively by administrators as pushback. One principal chastened me, chastised me, and demanded that I stop asking why and start asking how. But wouldn't knowing why we do things make the how we do it more effective? I replied, I am an inquisitive, inquisitive thinker, but I have never been a bull. Actually, I have a very easygoing personality in which I was able to communicate with a lot of parents and teachers and students and gain their support and their love and their respect. So I often felt like I had the support of the school on my side. And what I know is that the journalism skills that I have matched with the personality that I have made me a great candidate to come into a school and speak the taboo. This is where true power of the teacher voice lies. Right there in our own school buildings, dialoguing about the nitty gritty details of how and why we operate the way we do. Teachers often complain that education policy, education policies are created by rich politicians or corporate executives who they have no idea how difficult it is to teach. Also, we say, Washington needs to hear us. Well, our voice needs to make it to Washington. 
because the educated, education bureaucrats there, they just don't get it. And I agree, 100%. More teacher voice should be heard before any education bureaucrat parts his or her lips to announce another brilliant education strategy. I also want to challenge all of us to think about who is going to step up to make decisions that are within our locus of control at our own schools. Who is going to take on those very sensitive school issues that are hindering our own students? So here are some examples of some taboo issues. Who's going to break the news to the principal that those expensive education consultants that she's so proud of have actually provided a curriculum that is confusing and boring our students to tears? Who is going to say something? Or what do you do if you just so happen to see a couple of teachers erasing student answers on a standardized test? How do you react if the black kid gets expelled for fighting, but the white kid gets an in-house suspension for threatening to blow up the entire school. I want to challenge all of us to take on these taboo questions and to figure out how to deal with them. I spoke the taboo once, and I was fired. Here's the story. It was my fourth year of teaching, and I got a rave review the year before. The principal told me I was, quote, unquote, the best teacher in the primary building. And the next year, I was negative and not welcome back. What happened? Well, a tenured and, and nationally board certified teacher was my grade level partner. And together we decided that we needed to inform the principal of something that was deeply concerning to us and actually most of the staff, though they were too afraid to tell this story. The assistant principal was conducting herself in very unsatisfactory manner in which she would constantly give condescending remarks about our black inner city students, comparing them to the rich white suburban students that she had previously taught. She also had no idea how to manage student behavior and therefore made some really bad decisions. In addition, she was very demanding about how we should teach, but she refused outright to come in and help model what she was asking us to do. So instead of talking bad about her, we decided we'd write this up in a memo and take it straight to the principal. We would be professional. And that's what we did. Little did my tenured and highly accomplished teacher friend and I know was that within two years, our principal and assistant principal who were both married to their spouses would be divorced and married to each other within two years. Needless to say, my little memo did not bode well with either of them. And I was four, four months away from achieving, achieving tenure, so I was sent packing. My accomplished grade level partner, however, received no retribution or no retaliation but she decided to leave anyway, and so did one-third of our staff. I'm not going to pretend like that issue and being fired did not affect me. I was deeply hurt. In fact, I was pretty devastated. I had two young children at home and a new mortgage, and I honestly did not know what I was going to do. But with the support of my husband and my faith, we made it through. I want to share with you a quote from Holocaust survivor, neurologist, and psychiatrist, Viktor Frankl. What is to give light must endure burning. And I think that is so true. I got burned, 
but I'm shiny now. Thank you. But let me be clear, speaking the taboo is very different from gossiping or snooping around for the next tabloid-like school scandal. When we speak the taboo in our schools, it must come from a place of virtue, of wholesomeness, a place of love. I love my school enough, my students enough, and even my principal enough to tell him the truth. <laughs> Speaking ta the taboo has risk and can be very difficult, but it, and it's a very, very brave thing to do. But it's something that we all can do and we all need to do if we are ever expecting to make some serious root, grassroots level changes right in our own schools. Keep in mind that when you speak the taboo, you're not trying to degrade anybody or embarrass anybody. The root of what you are doing is to build a school environment. We're trying to support the school. We're trying to make a change for good. The passion comes from our love of education and our students and the desire to elevate the quality of education. And that has to take some bravery. And that has to take some strength. But it's in us all to do it. Now I have some helpful tips on how to teach or how to speak the taboo. The first one is to be true to yourself. Be the best teacher that you can be so that you have the credibility to walk in that room and tell your true words. That means coming on time, being a fair person, and working hard. Also, we have to be humble and open to the idea that we could be wrong. So before even taking the first step, we need to be more introspective and pensive about why are we saying this? Why are we doing this? Does it really matter to us? Or do we just have a chip on our shoulders? And we also must document the inconsistencies that we observe in writing and do it in an honest and fair way. Credibility will take you a long way in this discussion. Also, don't do it alone. You, we need to collaborate with other courageous teachers who have observed the same thing. And with those colleagues, we have to make our case in writing, in the most objective, solutions-oriented way. We can schedule a meeting with as many school administrators as appropriate, respecting the confidentiality of those meeting discussions. Relentlessly pursue a resolution. We are trying to resolve a problem in-house before we should try to ask anyone else to come in and mediate for us. Request that whatever was agreed upon as a next step or action step should be put in writing and follow up on the progress of those steps. And then, as a last resort, if you absolutely cannot find a resolution, seek outside help. Ask authorities to come in and support you if you feel like the teachers or the students continue to suffer injustice. These are some simple things that we can do to help bring about change on a local level. And these changes are so powerful. They're more powerful than any legislation that any politician or any board president or any CEO of Chicago Public Schools could ever pass. We have the power. If we feel helpless to make changes within our own locus of control at our schools, how will our voices ever reach Washington? More importantly, 
If we stay silent, how can we ever hope to inspire and empower our students to push for change? We have to be an example to them because they are watching us. And they know when their teacher is empowered or when their teacher has been silenced. So going back to Paolo Freire's words, the true words that he spoke of, I believe that when true words are spoken from a place of virtue, in the spirit of dialogue, they have the power to transform a school, if not the world. Thank you.